Good morning, students. This is CP Prashant from Kendra Vidyalaya Ganesh Kendra. Today we will we'll be discussing about electrochemistry. We will be discussing about the working of a cell. We start discussing the topic by discussing about, about a small experiment. The experiment most of you must have seen in the school. Suppose you put a small piece of zinc in a solution of copper sulfate. What do you observe? You know solution of copper sulfate is blue in color and zinc is a white colored metal on the piece of zinc and after a while the color of the solution will fade. This will become colorless if you wait for a very long time. And this is what we will discuss first, why it is happening. Zinc being a more reactive metal than copper, it will displace copper from copper sulphate and forms zinc sulphate. The copper from copper sulphate gets deposited on the metal. Since zinc sulphate is colorless, the solution will fade. Since copper gets deposited on zinc, you get a covering of copper on the piece of metal. Now we will discuss the same reaction in terms of the involvement of electrons. You can see the oxidation number of zinc is 0 here, oxidation number of zinc is plus 2 here, oxidation number of copper is plus 2 here, oxidation number of copper is 0 here. So what it means is zinc is giving out 2 electrons, it is becoming zinc 2 plus, 2 electrons are lost here. Copper from plus 2 is becoming Cu2 0 which means 2 electrons are gained. So it is like 2 electrons which is given out by zinc is being accepted, accepted by copper ion from the solution. So zinc is becoming an ion, copper is becoming a metal. So zinc is getting oxidized, copper is getting reduced. And as you know oxidation is loss of electrons, reduction is gain of electrons. So the ultimate change is electrons from zinc is getting transferred to the copper 2 plus ions which is in the solution. So it is the transfer of electrons from zinc metal to Cu2 plus ions. Now as you all know the electricity is flow of electrons. So if somehow if you can manage electrons flowing through a wire what you get is electricity. You put a piece of zinc in zinc sulphate and do you think something will happen? Obviously not because zinc is in zinc sulphate solution. Now we put copper in copper sulphate solution again there will not be any change. We are manipulating the same reaction in a little different way. The moment you connect, we have put zinc in copper sulphate solution indirectly. So you can expect the same reaction to happen here. So zinc now will be giving out electrons, it is becoming zinc 2 plus ions and those electrons will move through the wire, reach on the other compartment where Cu2 plus accept those electrons to get copper. So from the solution Cu2 plus accept electron from the rod and deposit on the rod. From the rod of zinc, zinc come to the solution as zinc 2 plus ions. A particular issue with this arrangement is the circuit is not complete. So we need to complete the circuit for this cell to be working. The method of completing the circuit is by connecting these two solutions 
by means of what is called a salt bridge. It is nothing but a solution of some electrolyte like potassium nitrate or potassium chloride or any electrolyte for that matter. The electrolyte can be taken on a filter paper and can be connected, connected these two solutions. So, what happens is these ions in the salt bridge come to the compartments or the ions in the salt bridge connect these two compartments. So, you have seen that when uh, a piece of zinc is put in copper sulphate, there is a covering of copper, the color of copper sulphate fades. The reason being that zinc reacts with copper sulphate to form zinc sulphate and copper. Now, what happens here is the zinc is getting oxidized to single 2 plus ions by the loss of 2 electrons. Cu which is already in plus 2 oxidation state, it is becoming copper metal. So, oxidation state becomes 0 by accepting 2 electrons. So, basically we can think about this reaction as something like this. Zinc is passing 2 electrons to Cu 2 plus ions in the solution. Therefore, the zinc is coming into solution as single 2 plus ions and becoming single sulphate. Copper 2 plus ions from the solution is accepting 2 electrons and it is becoming copper metal. So, getting deposited on the single metal. Now, this particular reaction can be converted into a cell. Now, basically in a cell we get electricity. Electricity means the flow of electrons. There is a flow of electron from the metal zinc to copper, but right now it is happening directly. If you can manipulate this reaction in such a way that those electrons pass through a wire before it comes to copper 2 plus ions, what you get is electricity. So, basically we are converting the same reaction into a cell. So, we will see how you manipulate this particular reaction. So, we will see how this particular reaction can be manipulated so that you get electricity going through a wire. Instead of electric electrons passing directly from zinc to copper 2 plus ions, let us manipulate the reaction in such a way that electrons pass through a wire before it comes to Cu 2 plus ions. So, how we do that is what we have to see now. Instead of uh, putting zinc in copper sulphate, suppose we put zinc in single sulphate itself, will there be any reaction? Obviously, there will not be any change because zinc is in contact with the single 2 plus ions. Now, the same way if you put copper metal in copper 2 plus ions by using copper sulphate solution, here also there will not be any change. But now, if you connect this zinc rod with the copper rod, we have actually done the same thing which we had done earlier that your zinc metal now is in contact with Cu 2 plus ions. So, which means the electrons will start flowing. The only difference now is that the electrons are not going directly to copper 2 plus ions. Instead of that, electrons will go through a wire. So, we have manipulated the same reaction in a little different way. It is done so because electrons instead of going directly, it is going through a wire and what you get is electricity and what you have created is a cell. But there are certain issues before we can actually use it. One is this zinc rod you know becoming zinc sulphate solution or it is coming to solution as zinc 2 plus ions. Now, when zinc comes to zinc 2 plus ions already there were Zn 2 plus ions and SO4 2 minus ions in the solution. 
there are additional single duplex ions coming to the solution which will make the solution positively charged because there is excess zinc 2 plus ions now. In the same way here on this side earlier we had CO 2 plus ions SO4 2 minus ions the charge cancel each other because the number of CO 2 plus ions number of SO4 2 minus ions will be same. The solution was neutral earlier but as the reaction starts the CO 2 plus ions from the solution getting electrons from copper rod the electrons which are given out by zinc the Cu2 plus ions going to the rod accepting electrons and is becoming copper metal. So, the number of Cu2 plus ions here comes down this compartment will have excess SO4 2 minus ions which makes the whole compartment negative. So, the question is will the cell work under such a circumstance? You can see the this particular compartment has become positively charged. Why should electrons leave this compartment now which is already positively charged? Why should electrons be welcome here attracted here because it is negatively charged? Here electrons will be attracted here electrons will be repelled. So, this flow of electrons stops. The only way you can resume the flow of electrons is cancelling these charges which are created here. So, let us see how we can do that. So, first issue is the charges are getting created on either sides on the left hand side positive charge is created right hand side negative charge is created if you want the cell to work these charges are to be cancelled off. The second issue is the circuit is to be completed which is not completed right now. Now, both these issues can be solved by using a uh, device called salt a bridge. Basically salt a bridge is something which neutralizes the charge which are created on either sides. So, what do you do with salt a bridge is or what do you do in this particular uh, situation is we try to neutralize these two charges by providing ions of opposite charge. So, if you can provide ions of negative charge to this compartment ions of positive charge to this compartment these charges get cancelled the electrons will start flowing again which will also solve this problem of the circuit. Now, we will see how a salt bridge is used the simplest way of using a salt bridge is use a filter paper dip in potassium nitrate or potassium chloride or maybe any electrolyte and put that filter paper like this. The filter paper was already dipped into these solutions. So, filter paper got K plus ions NO 3 minus ions. Obviously, the K plus ions will move to this compartment this being negatively charged NO 3 minus ions will move to this compartment this being positively charged. So, KNO3 effectively neutralizes the charges, the charge created is cancelled off and electrons will start flowing again. Salt bridge also serves the purpose of completing the circuit. So, your cell is functional now with a salt bridge. Practically, we cannot use the salt bridge like this. So, there is a particular way you use or you make a salt bridge, you make a U tube. you take hot water put a gel called agar agar in it and also dissolve potassium nitrate. The reason we use hot water is agar agar makes a solution in hot water. This solution can be put into this U tube wait for some time on cooling this will become semi solid. So, this is how a cell works. Now, you can see this cell has got two compartments. The compartment which is here is where the zinc is getting oxidized to single 2 plus ions with the removal of two electrons. 
the other compartment where the electrons are accepted is here. So, Cu2 plus is accepting electrons to become copper. So, this part is oxidation, this part is reduction. Any cell should have two compartments, one where oxidation takes place and one where the reduction takes place. The compartment where the oxidation takes place is called anode and compartment where the reduction takes place is called a cathode. So, by definition anode is the electrode where the oxidation takes place, cathode is the electrode where the reduction takes place. Now, if you examine the charge of anode and cathode, what will be the charge of anode and what will be the charge of cathode? Will this be positive or negative? Will this be positive or negative? The charge of the electrodes. So, we will examine the charge of anodes and cathodes. The electrode where the electrons are accepted has to be positive because negatively charged particles are accepted. The place where electrons are generated has to be negative. So, by that argument your anode is positively charged, I am sorry, anode is negatively charged and cathode is positively charged. Electricity being produced by chemical changes and that is the reason we call it an electrochemical cell. Now, the question is how do we represent a cell? You cannot always draw a cell, draw the electrodes like this to represent a cell. So, we will learn how to convert this into a representation. To represent a cell, what you always do is you start with the electrode which is anode, put a slash which represents the interface. The electrode is in zinc sulfate solution, which means zinc rod is in contact with the zinc 2 plus ions. After this, there is a salt bridge which is represented with a double slash. The salt bridge is in contact with CO2 plus ions and which again is in contact with copper metal. The convention is when you represent a cell, represent the cell always with the anode on the left hand side and cathode on the right hand side. which means the left hand side of the electrode electrochemical cell in the representation.